brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. I welcome you to this week's edition of the St. Jude Parish Chatter. And of course, I'm here with Deacon Joe. How are you doing today, Deacon Joe? Oh, I'm doing wonderful today. Was it cold last night? Did you close the window? Yeah, yeah I didn't sleep with the windows open yet. But uh, but yeah, it was quite quite pleasant this morning. Yeah, I, I love summertime. It never gets too hot for me around here. So <laughs> it's, there's a little bit of sadness going on in my heart around fall. How do you like fall? Is fall a, part, a season that you love? Well, it's getting to be a little more here, you know, in, in, in Texas. they, uh, In fact, yesterday they set a uh, record of uh, 90-something degrees in, in October. And often it can be, you know, 80 or 90 degrees into the 9 or 10 o'clock at night. So fall here is uh, very, very nice and very different, you know. We only had a couple of trees that dropped leaves, you know. So In Texas, do they use the same joke that we use in Arizona? So the joke that we use in Arizona is we have two seasons in Arizona. We have warm and we have hot. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> pretty much two it. Seasons. Yeah. You probably have humid and less humid. Yeah, that's it, you know. <laughs> so I had a cousin who lived in Michigan that said they had uh, four seasons, June, July, August, and winter. <laughs> So. That's right. Or the Colorado joke that we have almost winter, winter, still winter, and road construction. Those yeah. are the four seasons here <laughs> in, in Colorado. Good one. So I love uh, I love fall just to get out the um, get out the coat and kind of change things up a little bit. You can't stay in summer all the time. So no. much, as much as I do love summer best, I'll take fall as my second favorite. Honestly, yeah, yeah. I hear you. It, um, there's the colors out there. I went bike riding oh, on yeah. on Monday. And I went down the Bear Creek Trail, and just the colors were, were popping with the yellows and purples were out there. Yeah, yeah. reds, and, and it just, uh, it's just so, so beautiful to see that, that change. Did you uh, take in any of the fall while you're in Texas? Is it, are there colors down there? What's it, what's it like for fall in Texas? Well, uh, where, where I am on the coast, there's a, 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 just a few kinds of trees that turn, and it's kind of like one day they're yellow, and then the next day they're all on the ground. Mm. doesn't last long. A friend know. of mine made that observation to me here, too. Whenever you see the colors, appreciate them, because pretty soon there's going to be a windstorm. And as soon as there's a wind, it's all gone in the same day. Yep. We have a sponsor for this week, as we always have within our podcast. And Deacon Joe and I have decided to do something special for our sponsor this week. What are we doing this week, Deacon Joe? Oh, we're going to honor St. Jude. Yeah, so St. Jude's Feast Day is coming up on October 28th, and... I encourage the people of God to have a great devotion to St. Jude. Have I ever told you the story of how we ended up with the name of St. Jude? Here no, I'd be interested to hear that. So St. Jude was, um, the, the parish didn't have a name when it was first established by Archbishop Casey. So according to the stories that I've heard, they did a poll of the people that were participating in the little fledgling parish. And they asked them, what do you want to call your new parish? And the number one response that came in was St. Jude. And that's how we ended up with the name of St. Jude. And I've experienced it in my own life. St. Jude has a powerful intercession. And so um, we are going to honor him at St. Jude Parish. And I encourage the people of God to ask him for intercession whenever you have an impossible case. Because he has a powerful intercession before God. Would you tell the people a little bit more about St. Jude? Sure. St. Jude, known as Thaddeus, was a brother of St. James the Less and a relative of our Savior. Ancient writers tell us that he preached the gospel in Judea. Samaria, Idumea, Syria, Mesopotamia, and Libya. According to Eusebius, he returned to Jerusalem in the year 62 and assisted at the election of his brother, St. Simeon, as Bishop of Jerusalem. He is the author of an epistle to the churches of the East, particularly the Jewish converts. Directed against the heresies of the Seminoians, the Nicolaites, and the Gnostics. This apostle is said to have suffered martyrdom in Armenia, which was then subject to Persia. The final conversion of the Armenian nation to Christianity did not take place until the third century of our era. St. Jude, we pray for his intercession for all of us. And he was was a humble saint. There's a book in the Bible that is attributed to St. Jude. And it's short. You can sit down and just, uh, it's just one chapter long. Yeah. So uh, you can take that at any time. But we want to turn to the gospel for this weekend. Would you share the gospel with us? Sure. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. 
Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or my left is not mine to give, but for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Deacon Joe, I hear the theme of humility coming forward in this gospel. James yeah. and John came forward with this prideful <laughs> request that they would be great in the midst of the kingdom. And our Lord showed his frustration with the, their answer because humility is the virtue that he wanted to bring out of them. Humility, um, the root of the word is the same word as we use for, for dirt, humus. So mm-hmm. it's simplicity it's also um, what we are made of. So our bodies are just of this earth. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, we say in funerals. And this is just an image of um, the reality that our souls are great, not because we are so great, but because God has made us for himself. And when we're absorbed into him, then we have greatness. But that greatness is a humble greatness. It's recognizing that, that we're just creatures and could come and, and go quickly within this life. Thing, one of the things that I was reading, too, about this where Jesus is talking about, can you drink the cup that I will drink? And yeah. that a lot of times in uh, the time period of uh, Jesus and the apostles, that, that cup is often symbolized as like the cup the uh, the rulers drink from or the kings or whatever they drink from is uh, like a royal cup. But the cup Jesus is talking about is his passion. Wow, it's a powerful, powerful image brought with me a little commentary from Peter Kreft. It's, it's okay. a new book. Somebody gave this to me. Right. And Peter Kreft talks a little bit about James and John as well with that request mm-hmm. that they would drink from that cup. He says, Jesus says to James and John that they will indeed receive the answer to their request. In other words, they'll get the cup to drink. Mm-hmm. But it's not the way they had in mind. <laughs> Sharing with them the earthly success and power and reign, that's what they expected. Right. They would get a far higher kingdom and power and glory namely heaven and holiness, they would become saints, not Caesars, because the only way to true happiness is joy is through our Lord Jesus Christ. So I thought that was worthy of some contemplation that often we want to become Caesar. The older I get, the more I realize that these people have these big jobs that we admire, whether it's um, becoming the Pope or if you want to be uh, a bishop or if you want political office. Um, Those are hard work. Those positions have hard work. And it gets complicated because you're working mm-hmm. with people all the time and there's sickness in the midst of the world. Sin comes into the world. So, um, yeah, even I'm just so happy to be the pastor of St. Jude Parish. <laughs> Don't need any advances beyond this. If I can continue with Peter Kreft's sure. observation, he says, quote, When the others heard about the request of James and John, they were envious and angry. So Jesus sat them down and said to them, to all of them equally, both the two who tried to get their feet in the door before the others and to the other ten, that his kingdom and his power and his glory, the three things we praise God for in the doxology of the Lord's Prayer, are the opposite of what they thought. Not being served, but serving. Not getting, but giving. Not being first, but being last. As I read that, I think of some of the the great mentors that I've had in the priesthood, how they exhibit this not being served, but serving. Mm -hmm. Not getting, but giving. Um, I think of Father Liam Leahy, I shout out to a, a, a priest mentor of mine. He's now retired in Tucson, Arizona, but he definitely exhibited not not getting but giving throughout his entire life. He would just spend the day trying to give things away and have nothing for himself. And I just, um, I was inspired by that, by, by his um, desire to live not for himself but for God. How about you, Deacon Joe? Who inspired you? Well, a couple, a couple of different folks, you know. I think one was our... Uh... 
guy in Calveston, Houston, our diaconal head, Ger Deacon Gerald Dupont, was a big inspiration to me. He was uh, he came from Louisiana, Texas, so he had lived a really. Wait, he came from where? Where did he come from? Louisiana. Louisiana, not from Louisiana. No, Lu Louisiana. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for clarifying that for me. All right, so he's from Louisiana, come yeah, to Texas. That's right. And he all that's said, right. "Yeah, you know," and he was just. Uh, I remember him talking about a uh, pastor that inspired him, one of the guys that would go, you know, from house to house in his little little parish in Louisiana, you know. I mean, this guy just spent most of his days just visiting folks and mm -hmm. seeing what they needed, if they needed anything, praying with them, sometimes bringing food to them, whatever they needed, but just that. And and Gerald had a really simple way of, of saying and, and really emphasizing what, what he called servant leadership. Yeah, right, that's what and I hear in the humility, gospel today. Exactly, there's some humility involved with that, and that's yeah. what James and John got wrong. They weren't doing servant leadership; they were hoping to be served by everybody else. Right. right. Humility is the is the <clears throat> antidote to that. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe Deacon Joe, could we offer a litany of humility and sure. just offer that on behalf of the entire parish because we were ex exhorted this weekend to be humble. And so um, there's a beautiful prayer called the Litany of Humility. Let's offer that, okay? Okay. I'll do the first part if you do the responses, okay, Deacon Joe? Sounds good. Oh, Jesus, meek and humble of heart. Hear me. From the desire of being esteemed. Deliver me, oh, Jesus. From the desire of being loved. Deliver me, oh, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled. Deliver me, oh, Jesus. From the desire of being honored. Deliver me, O oh Jesus. From the desire of being praised. Deliver me, O oh Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others. Deliver me, O oh Jesus. From the desire of being consulted. Deliver me, O oh Jesus. From the desire of being approved. Deliver me, O oh Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated. Deliver me, O oh Jesus. From the fear of being despised. Deliver me, O oh Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes. Deliver me, O oh Jesus. From the fear of being calumniated. Deliver me, O oh Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten. Deliver me, O Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed. Deliver me, O Jesus. From the fear of being wronged. Deliver me, O Jesus. From the fear of being suspected. Deliver me, O Jesus. That others may be loved more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I go unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others should become holier than I, provided that I should become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Well, Father, would you extend God's blessing to us as we go forth today? I, I would be honored to. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.